How many times have you made a purchase thinking, you know, maybe this will be the piece that really rounds out my wardrobe, that makes me feel like I'm not in want, that I have the pieces that feel good to me? Or how many times have you bought something feeling like this piece will finally make me feel cool? Well, to be honest, there have been many times where I've had that thought process, but then it just doesn't pan out that way. So today I want to share some ways for you to feel inspired by your own closet. Little tricks to help you find that perfect outfit that you already own. One way to feel more satisfied with what you already have is to make the experience of going into your closet calming and inviting. You want your closet to feel like a mini market, full of curated, well-cared-for pieces. By decluttering the backup clothing or the pieces you don't really like wearing, you're left with just the items that you absolutely love. And also, when there's a little bit of space between things and it's easy to pull things out and put things back in, you can play around with combinations a little bit more, you can see what you have, and the clothing itself has a little bit more space to breathe and to feel fresh. When you have a jammed closet full of stuff, quite often there's a high percentage of stuff you don't even really like or don't even really wear, and it masks the pieces that you actually love or feel good in. Think about when you go into one of those really fancy stores that maybe you can never really afford. How often are those racks just jammed with clothes versus how often are they well steamed, carefully selected, kind of have a little breathing room? Context is everything. So if you look in your closet and you see one item in the midst of a bunch of other items you love, you automatically may feel a little bit more drawn to it. Also, I've noticed as I've decluttered, the less I have, the more I feel like I have, the more options I feel like are open to me. A second strategy is to spend time looking through your closet or dresser. And I know this one might sound kind of basic, but I've noticed so often when I plan outfits, I actually do it mentally when I'm not by my closet. I think about what I'm gonna wear or pack on a trip without actually facing what exists in my space. The difference is if you actually physically walk up to your closet or wardrobe and look through your options and maybe even pull things out and imagine what they'd look like together, it gives you the feeling of shopping even when you're not shopping. A third tip is to be inventive with your accessories. Don't be afraid to use accessories in a new or different or bold way. Like maybe take that belt and throw it around the blazer that you don't normally wear a belt around. Switch your jewelry or even how you're wearing your hair for the same outfit or what shoes you're wearing. Shoes really set the tone or the vibe of an outfit or how casual or elevated it feels. And so wearing even the same outfit and just switching the shoes for different occasions can bring life to an outfit you've worn a lot. A fourth tip is to actually try on outfits and even take photos like you might in a store. So often, the experience of having something on is very different from how you picture it in your head. And this happened recently for me when I was planning a New Year's outfit. I put something on, and once I had it on, it just did not feel right. I did not feel good in it. So I overhauled the plan, and I tried on something else that felt way better. I think the process of trying something on transforms the experience of getting dressed and helps you make sure that you're finding an outfit that you actually feel good in. It also, again, makes you feel like you're kind of shopping if that's something you enjoy doing, even if you're not out there at a store. Another tactic is to take advantage of storage. Say you heard my first tip to declutter and you're like, I only have like a third of a closet for how much stuff I can have, so having a bunch of air between each blouse just isn't feasible. Well, take advantage of storage. Go through periods where you only have subsets of your belongings in your closet, and then put the rest away in somewhere that's fairly easily accessible but out of view. That way, every so often, you can switch out what's in your visually apparent closet, and you can feel like you're getting new pieces all the time and rediscovering old pieces that maybe you haven't used in a few months. I do think there's a fine line to being a bold declutterer and then decluttering so much that then you go out and buy more. And I think storage can help bridge that gap when you're not really sure, putting some of the maybes away in storage for a period of time and then coming back to it and decluttering it if you haven't really used it or wanted it. But it's also a way to make your wardrobe constantly feel refreshed. 
If you like that feeling of novelty of something new, I feel like sometimes we can achieve that by using old pieces we haven't touched in a while. And of course, storage can be a slippery slope to having way too much, but I think if you're regularly decluttering and being thoughtful about it and revisiting that storage space, it can be a wonderful tool to help your wardrobe feel enjoyable and exciting. A sixth and important tip is to keep in mind the illusion of coolness and where that came from for you. Maybe this is just me, but I feel like sometimes once something is in my closet, it automatically just feels less appealing or less cool. Maybe because it's me and I look at other people and I assume other people have it more together, other people are cooler, other people have better taste, all that. But the reality is a lot of us feel that way. And a lot of us, I think when we buy things for our wardrobes are trying to seek this feeling of, I have everything together in my life. I look like I'm financially stable. I look like I have a point of view with my style. Basically, I wanna look cool, but somehow when it's something I own, it automatically feels less cool. I don't know what it is, but I think sometimes when I think about that and I bring my awareness to it, and I look again more critically at what I already have, I realize if I saw this outfit on somebody else, I would love it. I would be envious of it. I would want it. Sometimes just bringing my own awareness to that reality that that is a trap my mind falls into allows me to just step out of that mindset and just say, you know what? Some of the stuff I have is cool and I can enjoy it. And maybe I will never be the coolest person, but maybe I'm not as uncool as I assume I am. And sometimes I think it's helpful to realize maybe I'll actually be quote cooler if I enjoy what I have and lean into my perspective and lean into my identity and my preferences and my style and I wear the same things over and over again. Maybe I'll actually give off an air of confidence more if I just stick with what I have and what I was initially on a gut level drawn to. I think once you start seeing impulse buying as less cool and as a symptom of a lack of confidence, you suddenly rewire your thinking to see how appreciating what you have and even outfit repeating might actually be cooler. Anyway, these were just some of my simple ideas or tactics for helping you enjoy your wardrobe more, shop your own closet. I'd love to hear if any of you have ideas as well. Please share them in the comments below because I'm trying to get more and more use out of what I already have and to enjoy it more, so I'm all ears. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. It's a great way to support the channel. And you can also subscribe for more videos like this one. Anyway, thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.